Okay, we're going to look over how to solve a linear programming problem using the simplex method. So the first step is to rewrite the problem, inserting slack variables and rewrite the objective function with a zero on one side. So for our first constraint, we're going to insert the slack variable u to turn it into an equation instead of an inequality. For our second, we'll insert the slack variable w to turn it into an equation and instead of an inequality. We don't need to worry about these ones because they're included in the simplex method. But we do need to rewrite this. And we want to move everything over to the left hand side because we want a zero on one side and we want the p to be positive in what we do. So now we have our initial tableau. We have our variables we're finding listed across the top. And then each row is the coefficients of one of those equations. 3, 5, 1, 0, 0, 78, 4, 1, 0, 1, 0, 36. And then the last line is for the objective function. Minus 5, minus 4, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now, we need to choose a pivot position. We go across the bottom row until we hit the, the vertical bar and say what is the largest negative number. And that's going to choose our pivot column. Then we want to choose which row is going to be our pivot row. So I'm going to take the numbers in this column and divide them into the numbers in the constant column. Okay. Meaning the numbers on the far right side. And I get 26 and 9. Now, which of those numbers is smallest? The 9. And that's what chooses our pivot row. So the 4 is our pivot element. Now, the first thing to do is to use row operations to make that a 1. So we're going to replace row 2 with 1 fourth row 2, which has the effect of dividing this whole row by 4, thus getting a 1 right here. So we end up with 1, a fourth, a 0, a fourth, a 0, 9. Now, this 1 is still our pivot element, and the next step is to use row operations to get zeros above and below it. So to make this a 0, I'm going to do r1 minus 3 r2, because it's always the row you're fixing minus the number that's there times the row with the one element in it or with the pivot element. To fix this row, it's going to be R3 plus, th plus excuse me, 5 R2. Okay. So we do these calculations. is not going to change, but the first row will become 0, 17 fourths, 1, minus 3 fourths, 0, 51, and the last row will become 0, minus 11 fourths, 0, 5 fourths, 1, 45. Now it may take a while to actually do those calculations with the fractions, but when we get to this part, we now repeat over again. And I say, which column on the bottom has the most negative number? Well, there's only one negative number left, so it will be that column. Then I'm going to take each of the numbers in that column and divide them into the numbers over here. So I have 51 divided by 17 fourths which is the same as 51 times 4 over 17 gives me 12. 9 divided by 1 fourth is the same as 9 times 4 gives me 36. I choose the one that is smallest. So this is my pivot element. Okay. Now I need that to become a 1. And so I'm going to replace 
the first row by 4 seventeenths times itself, which is the same as dividing by that number that's already there. So I end up with 0, 1, 4 seventeenths minus 3 seventeenths, 0, and 12. And everything else will stay the same. is still my pivot element, and now I need to get zeros everywhere else in the column, so I need those to be zeros. To make this one-fourth a zero, I'm going to do r2 minus one-fourth r1. To make the negative eleven-fourth zero, I'm going to do r3 plus eleven-fourths r1. First row is not going to change. This, the second row turns into 1, 0, minus 1 17th, 21, 50 once, 0, and 6. And the last row becomes 0, 0, 11 17th, 52, 50 ones, 1, and 78. Now, we have completed this because we have no more negative numbers on the bottom row. And now we can read off the answer. Okay. Every column that has just the single one and zeros everywhere else is going to give us a variable. So this is a one in the x column, so it's going to be x equals something. It's a one in the second row, so x will be six. This is a one in the y column, so it will be y equals something. It's a 1 in the first row, so y equals 12. This is a 1 in the p column, so it'll be p equals something. And it is in the third row, so p equals 78. The columns that do not have the single 1 followed by zeros mean those variables are just declared to be 0. So u equals 0, w equals 0 here. Okay, And we have our solution, the two variables, and the value of the objective function for this linear programming problem.